Please allow this meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee comes to order on Tuesday, um, September 18, 2018. I'm just going to go around the room for the record to establish our attendees. I'll start with my county administrator to my right. Mark Teal. Jessica Theriel. Ron Roberts. Mike Mulcair. Miguel Valentin. Jerry Blackwood. Danielle Crow. Chris Swenson. Very good. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, first order of business is, is our tradition and custom is our adoption of our last meeting minutes from our last meeting. Um, hopefully the voting members have taken a look at them, read them, agree with them, or made edits by now. Okay. Um, can we get a motion then to adopt the meetings as presented in this meeting? So moved. Sir. We got a motion and a second. All in agree. Say aye. 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 Opposed or sustained. Motion carries. Okay, Miguel, you're up. Yes, sir. Uh, we have as a first uh, agenda item a, uh, yeah. an update on the outreach uh, from the collaborative firm. This would be uh, for multimodal or I guess yeah, double yeah, connect yeah. services uh, now, so aptly named. Um, so I will pass that on to uh, Danelle or whoever else is going to be. It's Danielle Crow. Yes, I'm, I'm here representing the collaborative firm uh, with regard to the um, rebranding and education campaign outreach for Connect Up with Phase 2. Um, at this time, I can just pass out a, a quick document which discusses the, the current activities, proposed activities, and deliverables for September. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You have an extra? I do. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, this is phase two of the Connect Douglas campaign and our kickoff meeting, obviously we were adopted September 4th, had the initial kickoff meeting with Gary on September 7th, although we spent considerable phone and email time um, prior to that just trying to hash down some key dates. Um, and as you all know, Gary is currently out of the office. Um, so on September 11th, uh, we had, and when I say we, I mean myself, Daniel Crow and Gary, had an extensive work session. So I was here on site from 11 to about 4 p.m. Um, just really trying to tie down key dates, deliverables, plan of action relative to the documents we had already reviewed. Um, and during that time, we. Um, came up with a couple of things. One, which I can share at this time, is the Connect Douglas launch party um, that has not been finalized thus far, but more than likely that will be October 10th, um, and that will be the official launch party. I think a little earlier I heard someone say ride share. We are no longer ride share. We are Connect Douglas, um, and as uh, internal members, we want to make sure that we are also brand ambassadors and be sure to use Connect Douglas as that name. Uh, we also looked at dates for the CMAC public hearings, which I'm sure you all have been discussing, uh, our PR media blitz and others. Um, I have just come back in from the Greystone um, Power Luncheon sponsored by the Douglas County Chamber. That, that's much needed face time with people in the business community and with the chamber. Um, during the first phase, we discussed some things, but because of uh, I would say the climate, I think the president was a little timid about moving forward, but now she's a little bit more comfortable and that's just about solidifying that relationship. And so um, that's why I attend those events as well as the uh, business after hours to understand that people know that we are part of the community. Um, obviously the transportation committee meetings will be here each month during the phase two. And then our community outreach for September, we will be at both September Saturdays on the 22nd and on the 29th. Um, the 29th is, um, I think the added significance to the 29th is that it's the touch a truck theme. And so the plan is to have one of the cutaways or the um, um, smart commute fans out there so that people can see it once again. Yeah. On both days? Um, on the 29th is the touch a truck. I understand. On the 22nd is family fun day. I understand. Um, do we know on the 29th, um, Mark, uh, 
think Madam Chair has some desire to make sure we had uh, optimized uh, exposure to that. Um, Gary wasn't here during this time period. Is there a way we can have Chuck there? Um, just, it's just awareness. Yeah, we can have it. So, so duly noted not to, to, to um, invalidate the 29th. I think that's appropriate back there with all the other trucks and engines and fire, but um, let's optimize the moment. So we're going to add that to it. Okay, have your vote. All right, keep going. Um, the other key dates in September are that Media Blitz to um, announce not only the official name change once again, but to show the um, Connect Douglas logo and color scheme, color palette, which has now been approved. Um, and at the same time, we will also launch our social media. On the 26th, we will then send out the invitations. Um, for the Connect Douglas launch event, which would be October 10th. So those are the key deliverables for September. Ms. Lokia? Mm -hmm. You okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. This um, a great document, very thorough. You guys put a lot of time in. I'm trying to process this. Um, and this is an internal document. This is something that we don't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily publish to the public. Or would we? We don't. Okay. We, right. we don't publish anything to the no, public. No, right. Let me say it a different way. Uh, it, it, and I'm, when I say we, it's more of a collective. Um, and this goes back to uh, Miguel, the, the need to be able to communicate broadly to the public. Key milestones, key dates. Um, this is a lot of narrative. This is great. This is the detail. But we need these milestones. Um, how do we get there? Because to, to her point, we've got to be able to put this to the public so they can at least train us, track us. Um, I'm sitting here like, okay, what are some top level things that they need to know? How, how do we do this? Well, we could certainly advertise uh, the various uh, events on our website. Yeah. And uh, I mean, to the extent that there is a component related to, to the outreach, we could highlight that as part of the website. Uh, beyond that, I, I don't know that we would be able to reach uh, the broader public uh, without some sort of either a flyer or something along those lines. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm thinking we're going to go back to just one more time the project schedule. Mm -hmm. There's something top level, critical path. Here's, I mean, I'm, I, I, I now, this is not supposed to be hard, but it's like any, I come out of a project world. So I'm, I'm used to a certain, you know, like you come out of math, you're used to numbers. I come out of a project world, so you're used to sort of like, here's the start, here's the end, this assignment, here are the key milestones along the way. And it's just, it's, a, it's like common language, common numbers, it's a common understanding of how to, to see the world. And I, again, I just want to make sure, this is great, great detail, great, great narrative, but I, one more time is being able to communicate easily to the public and not make them read all this, but like here are the key dates, here's the key milestones. And if you want more information, call us, right? And not necessarily y'all. Call us. Call call. But right. We have we've had some discussion with uh, particularly the third party uh, operator mm -hmm. and uh, developed a an outline as to how we're gonna get to uh, delivery of services uh, in the target date of March 2019. Yep. So <clears throat> we do have a basic outline that we have highlighted certain key dates and milestones. Uh, that is not something that we have rolled out, yep. uh, but it is something that we use uh, to, to guide our decision making. Okay, so there's going to be an, an intermediary between the third party communicator and the third party operator to make sure that these two plans mm -hmm. are lined up. And we have a single thread. I'm not looking over here with the marketing and all the immediate blitz and all that. I'm looking over here with that but me. It's a seamless thread. It's one look. I mean, what, 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 was, what was the, what was the um, landing page called? What did Rick call it? Something all things transportation. All things transportation. So we're just saying all one look. So just let's not belabor it. You get the point. We'll keep going. So if I may, from the education and um, rebranding standpoint, we did identify key dates. Um, 
from start to finish in terms of from September kickoff through the final report um, on 1231. Mm -hmm. And we were developing a visual, but because there was some um, challenges with finalizing a, a date or two um, during Gary's absence is why we're not presenting that now. But we have identified key dates in terms of the open houses. There was a, a communication that was scheduled to go out to the commissioners. Um, the whole nine. So we have looked at the project from a comprehensive and holistic perspective and identified those dates, looked at how they coincide with VOC meetings and work sessions and other um, activities within the county. Um, there was also some discussion about when the third party operator would be available and have his um, key components available so that we could conduct those open houses in conjunction with the third party operator. So that's what we have worked on the first two weeks in September after getting approval. Very good. I mean, again, excellent um, in what I'm hearing. Uh, but again, for example, we know that the buses won't be live until after 1231. Mm -hmm. right? So you laid out a plan all the way through 1231 but it's tiered, like right, you know, it's it's like this. It's not aligned. So there's some key things, even in going live after we come back in the first year, that it, 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 we just can't let it drop. That's why, like, yeah. somebody has to own all of it. You, them. Well, that's where we get off team. the bus. <laughs> that's where our contract ends for no, us no, currently. No, but no yeah. contract conversation. Okay. Right? It's more of a you guys care. Yeah, you and, and in terms of this. the rollout, we we are using the. The, the longer uh, timeline for delivery or startup of services to fit in these public outreach components. So they are, uh, as much as we're not all in the same room, they are being coordinated uh, with various of them. Just for assurance. Just, just looking for assurance. We don't want to slip, miss on this, and, and for lack of, um, to the point, we, we stopped, we missed the bus, and, and, and here we are. So. All right, let's not belabor this. Is there anything else you want to add to this part here? I mean, any other questions from anybody else? Mike, yeah. you okay? Yeah. Milestones, you okay with the, yeah. the open house and the, the blitz and yeah. the day party? Yeah, we're familiar with all that. What's the dress attire in the day party? So it's it's a weekday, so it's... That's it. Uh, we're still planning out the um, connect the, the right, launch nice party. Time. I didn't know we were calling it day party, but we'll go with that. But one of the key um, events will be out in the parking um, area of the, the Transportation Center to have the cutaways, which will hopefully be branded by then, at least one of them, to have that example, and the new vehicles. And actually, we're in discussion with seeing if we can have representation from um, GRTA and sort of as well, um, and just combining various events and just making it a community event. Just a food, food for thought. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's one thing to, to have an event and to get people there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of the whole point is to get people there. Another option is to go where the people are, i.e. the mall or Sam's or Walmart or, mm -hmm. you know, you, you name it. Is there some thought being, being given to that? Yes, sir. That mirrors what we did in phase one with the community pop-ups. That's one of our mantras, meet people where they are. And so those things will be conducted, but it will be conducted after the launch. The launch is at our home base. Um, where So it's also going to serve the dual purpose of uh, customer appreciation. Um, we want people to see where the transportation center is, that is mm -hmm. the hub. So it is multifaceted, We've, and I, I appreciate your comments. But once the cutaway is branded, we do want to take it out and take it on the road. Okay, good. But it won't be ready until then. Okay, good. Okay. Mark, you okay? Mm -hmm. This is yes, need to help some support. Um, ensuring, the other thing is, um, do we have coverage for our um, consultants? Make sure they've got access to buildings, they got room reservations. We've got that covered? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure with all these things being lined up, there's support that's being provided to make sure. Uh, my understanding is that, that you are doing the outreach to the various locations where you're going to have the, the events. So if we're speaking about, because I did recently um, submit a reservation form, mm -hmm. um, I don't do so without authorization or direction from Gary Watson. 
um, I was asked to complete or to check on the availability of Citizens Hall, uh, and I reached out to Sherry Mathis, as I generally do, and got redirected two or three times, which I think is just part of the process. Um, that is currently postponed right now, but the other event yeah, the is that the problem with that issue center. was those were public hearings, mm -hmm. and I think there was a misunderstanding on where and when those could be. The board commissioners have to be involved in those, so that's when we had to back up the point and say, look, we have, right. have to have those at board meetings. Understood, and the initial dates were October 2nd and 16th in conjunction with the BOC meetings, one in the AM, one in the PM, as discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we're advised to move in a different direction, I just respect chain of command and move accordingly. So I'll um, defer to you all's decision on where we go from there and, and move accordingly. So, so let's stay there for just a hot second. So um, this is the formal public hearing for the FTA application. Mm -hmm. That's a the two formal ones. Um, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, that's fine. Um, so we're not going with the dates of the 2nd or the 16th. Based on the last discussions with Gary, no. He said wait till he get, came back in town and he would set those up. Mm -hmm. and now we're flipping now we're what, the 16th and whatever the next in November. So now we're an election. Well, we, uh, we, again, we're going to get pretty deep out here. And I don't know what his application process needs to be. Just we just as far as the application process, he said that was fine. It doesn't throw us off, it doesn't. It? Um, but it doesn't throw you off into holidays. I mean, one of the things you get, we, we try to avoid holidays. We try to accommodate. Now you get to the deeper part. It's something to think about. In other words, um, I know Gary needs to be there um, because this this is critical to be able to facilitate certain conversations. But let's try to get this locked. Yes. Well, we were perfectly happy to put them on the 2nd and the 16th, wherever those days, wherever those days were, but Gary said, yeah. wait, so. Mike, what do you think? Can we go without them, or, and I know his value, don't get me wrong, two separate things. Do we move? Well, it may be a situation, uh, in, in, terms, in terms of timing process, you know, the critical flow and all that with the, with the application, uh, it may not matter may not matter to them. It may not matter to Gary. I think you're right to be sensitive about going into the holidays. Is that you just you have this in November of the week of Thanksgiving because you don't want people to show up. Yeah, that's that's what thanks for the, 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 the comment. That's what I'm always thinking. Yeah. So, um, and if I may also add the the other window for the other um, deliverables that we're responsible for, is we've also looked ahead and said these are the, the window for the public open houses within each district. And so those will happen post-election, and we're trying not to crunch them into Thanksgiving. So all that consideration was, was evaluated when we came up with the dates. No, do we know that they, that, put, that puts us in a very awkward, because we got holiday, you know, we got town halls, we got other stuff that we've got going on. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, let's get an action. Consideration. Do we go just start with the 16th and flip on the other side to at least only slip one meeting? So Gary will be back back when? That might be a good option. He'll be back on the 25th, September 25th. Oh, so why can't we go to the 2nd? I mean, I'm just. Well, we try, I don't have that. From an application we standpoint, we have time. So we, we're not constrained as much by that. It's a matter of fitting it into mm -hmm. to our schedule. The rest of the commission schedule. I mean, you gonna be out, Mike? No, well, who knows? Right. But uh, yeah. I mean, well, uh, I think your well, uh, suggestion might be plausible. Do it the second meeting in October and then the first meeting in November. That way, we, we do avoid, you know, the uh, Thanksgiving week. All right, so we're gonna have. Look, you got to appreciate this, okay? So we're gonna have the second public hearing on the bus during election night. No, October. You want to do it when? October sixteenth would be the first second meeting. one. Right, you want to? That would right, be the first. You want to do it in the morning. And the, and, the, and then the second meeting right. would be uh, the first meeting in November. Which is what? It would be the, the fifth and sixth. Six. Six. So you still and have. Election. So your your evening meeting in October would be the first meeting. And your morning meeting would be the first meeting in November. So we have a, we have a shift shifted uh, you know one time one one window. 
but it, it avoid, does avoid the Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to Thanksgiving holiday week, I should say. Yeah, we're, we're going to get hit putting that on that voting day. Oh, was that the election? Yeah, that's I'm not keeping track. I'm not keeping track. Yeah, yeah. 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 You want to get criticized? That, look, we got to go to our voting precinct, and you guys are having this meeting. I mean, even when Gary gets back on the 25th, we can. We there's time to put it on October 2nd and yeah. the 16th. It's, it's not about the agenda, if I may interject. It's about our public advertisement of it two weeks in advance. Yeah, that's right. That is, there is a two week advertisement for both of those. Mm -hmm. And is we that? have the the communication drafted, but when we were told to put things on hold. So we've been working. Yeah, you're right. It's so October 2nd file. We missed the window, window for, for, um, for the two weeks. For so the two week advertisement. I think I was doing the 20th initially. That's today or this week? It's this week, and that's before he returns. Since now we were told to put things on hold. I mean, what do we need for him just to, just to sign up on that? I mean, Miguel? I mean, we. we I get vacation. I appreciate that, but the business of the people has to keep moving, and I'm, I'm trying to keep this in sort of a you know, keep it on track. What do you think? Again, the, the constraint is not from the application standpoint. It's fitting it into the board's agenda. Of course, there are the obvious uh, notification and publication requirements, but uh, we would we would be fine either either. Uh, he can cover it, or I can cover it, and uh, uh, yeah, the, the uh, public hearing has a prescribed methodology, right? And so we would just need to be positioned at that point to uh, to take in the comments and then address it as part of the application. Right. Do we go no go line? Do we go ahead and set it in motion with the proper two week notice? Which means obviously we're making a recommendation to bring up this consideration of the board to bring, make it publicly aware that we need to have this hearing. So you don't know, on the second. Yeah. And the sixteenth. You're right. Before. We can't uh, we can't so meet the seventh. Why? We've already passed the window to advertise. That's what I was asking. What's that magic date? Fourteen days. So we had to have seen it last Friday. Mm -hmm. Passed the eighteenth, the twenty fifth. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be two weeks today? I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, I'm just doing it by just natural. Well, the 20th, 30th. It was the 17th, is 14 days, and we would have had to send it, send it on Friday to get it in either Sunday's paper or I don't know if there's one on Monday or not. Oh, it's Sunday, no, no. So we would have yeah. had to send it last yeah. Friday. It's We're Saturday. The newspaper it's schedule. It's off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we. It, no, no. It, 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 but it, no. in all fairness, Gary, we already have the ad drafted, the language in there, the dates for the meetings, where people could send their written comments, all that was prepared. So it would be two weeks, either today to Tuesday, because it would be published in Tuesdays, but it has to have occurred. Yes, it would have had to occur, occur before Friday. we had the meeting. Then it is like this. Yeah. All right. Good job. Mr. Smoke here, the 16th and the second. I mean, the second meeting. It's where we are. Can't get ahead. 16th and November 6th. Yeah. Mr. Smoke here. What do you think? Uh, enforce it? Uh, no. Uh, you don't mind. The, the first meeting would be October 16th. Correct. Which would be an evening meeting. Yeah. Okay, so we're going back to the, the what I said before, and then and then. Uh, November 6th, which, yeah. which would be an election night. I know, but it's in the morning. But it's a morning meeting. Yeah. I don't have fun. And it's not Thanksgiving holiday week. Yeah, that's, that's not concerned about more of Thanksgiving week. And I think that's the way, I think that would be my my vote, my support. I mean, we can always call I me. Mean, we'll get through this first from the announcement and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right, can I get a motion? I want to make sure we codify this one. All right, so can I get a motion that we're going to set the public hearing um, on October 16th, October 16, 2018, which is our and November evening, evening meeting at 6 p.m. at the time, and our second one on November 6th at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. That's my motion. Second. All in favor. You got it? Mm -hmm. All right. And Lisa will need to advertise those, so we already have the advertisements, just give them to her and she'll 
She'll take care of that. Okay, we'll send that on. Okay. But I'm going to broach it tonight just in commissioner comments just to set people's mm -hmm. expectations, even though there's a federal requirement to do it a certain way. Mm -hmm. to, to do that. So, okay. Miguel, sorry about that. That's going mm -hmm. longer, but no. Anything else on your topic here? Yeah, it is. Is there an action item we need to take? But, but very well thought out. I mean, it's very thoughtful. Um, it, it, it sounds, I mean, it appears it's going to have some, some exciting moments. Um, we just got to get the operational side aligned with this, right? So this is the framework to communicate, but obviously the substance is on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, last question is that right, September Saturdays, this was the question. If we do have a presence there, you said you're going to be done on the 29th? We're, the collaborative firm will staff outreach for both the 22nd right. and the 29th. That's right. Okay. All right. The, the question is, what are we discussing? You know, the reason I asked that, it was, a, it was more of a question that was posed to me. I'm not sure there's a pause, which is, are we going to rehash the buses, or are we just going to talk about existing services? I would rather not, not give these just point blank comment. It is what it is. Um, um, there's some hesitancy. If we just want to talk about general services, great, but, but not be boxed. Uh, to be talking about something that will come later during a more formal input process. And it was just more like, it was a question. It wasn't a directive, but it was just, I had to pose it. So I said I would bring it up to the committee. Shall I address that? Mm -hmm. just, oh. Mike, do you? Well, I, I, I think we're, we're still behind the curve in terms of, of the community knowing what mm -hmm. the services is, is, is provided. In general. Uh, you know, I know we have our Citizens Academy transportation comes in and talks about ride share and vouchers and all sorts of stuff people just nobody's ever heard of maybe one person in the room or two, two people that sort of thing i think it's incumbent to continue to hammer that that message and but not somebody's going to come in the booth and not but not to avoid any questions so obviously back there that's that's you know that will happen and if it will happen then it will be addressed right you know, appropriately i think the focus needs to be on, on existing services there will be a time frame for the new uh, rollout of the fixed route system slower, yeah. in, in a more in a more robust uh, you know formula. That kind of thing. That's that's my favorite. Miguel, did you talk to Gary at all? What are yes. you thinking? Separating, you know, it will be public input on the bus stops and all that, like we're doing with some of the other projects we've got going on. But what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree. I think those questions are going to come up regardless. Yeah. Uh, but this is not a. Uh, input so we can make a decision right. on mm -hmm. if or what. That's already behind us. Yep. This could be, uh, and in fact, we're, what we're looking for really, and we're not at that juncture just yet, but it would be more, uh, we're, we're, we finalize the routes at some point with input from the third party provider and, and the stops. field or, and where the stops are gonna go, and then we roll that out. And it could be that uh, a particular neighborhood or subdivision may have a better location. You know, they may suggest, well, why, why put it there? Because there's these issues. Right. You, do, you know, it fits better over here. That is the type of back and forth mm -hmm. that we're looking for uh, later on. At a later time. Yeah. At okay. a later time. But we're not quite ready for that because we haven't tweaked mm -hmm. the final version. All right. So, all right. Acknowledging your expectations and your insight, what were you planning on doing um, on those two days? So for us, that mirrors, um, I think, the, the vision that you all have. It is, as stated on here, education outreach, and that's for existing services. It's, it's not a public input opportunity. We recognize that this is a fun family event. People will be there with their kids, and they'll be more concerned with bouncy houses. Um, and cotton candy than whether or not there will be a bus. So um, we will share the existing RAC cards that were already approved with the um, existing services. We will allow people on the 22nd to sign up for the Connect Douglas updates. But by the 29th, we will start also pushing the launch party. So by then we would have a flyer approved to invite the public um, to our October 10th activity. That's good. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at peace with that. Mm -hmm. Mark. Yes, sir. Right. So we had inventory left over from the direct cars. I didn't think we had it. I mean, I'm okay, but that's good. We ordered things in bulk in, in anticipation for some other items that we weren't able to implement during yeah. phase one. Okay. Okay. But we'll have enough for then. Mark, what's the, the normal attendance at our 
September 10 to 10, 13,000 over two days. Um, Mike, do you remember? We used to know it all the time. Four, I would four say four days. to six thousand. Four to six, oh, oh, each day. Yeah. Total the weekend. I don't remember. For that. one weekend. Yeah. Right. So about ten thousand total. Yeah, over two, over two, yes. Okay. That might be a little high, but yeah. that's what I write away. Okay. okay. I just want to volume wise. Okay, but you'll have enough rack cards. Will you produce new rack cards uh, when we get into the more formal? Um, for example, our commission districts, will there be a revamping? Um, for the rec cards, if we have additional information from the third party provider at that time, um, we can look at um, developing some new pieces to incorporate the new information. I think that would be very appropriate, and that's on the plan for designing new templates as well. Mm -hmm. Not to push it, but just okay, do we know it. Miguel, anything else on this? No. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. You good? I'm welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next item on the agenda, and, and it ties in uh, to the bus service in, in, in a roundabout way. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not so, so roundabout, but uh, we have uh, the need to uh, come up with a system whereby, and this is the longer term vision, but also not so long term, that whereby we're able to uh, provide access not only to our own services but for folks to be able to transfer to other means of transportation within the region as right. part of that. I think the county for many, many years have been using the voucher process and, and certain cards, magnetic cards, and, but now we have to go to something new and as part of that we have an expert on those lines, Ms. Tierra here. You can tell us a little more about uh, what we use currently and why we have to consider something new. Okay, currently we're using those like 10 ride express cards, the one in the very back up there on his um, screen. They, we sell those in $25 increments and $100. The um, 10 rides is the 25 and then the 100 will last you for a month. Uh, CERTA is no longer going to be selling those cards. Uh, as a matter of fact, they've already gone over to the Breeze card. So what we've got right now, they have sent us some preloaded Breeze cards with $25 and some with $100. And, and we're selling those currently, but that is not going to be the best way for us to help these customers. What um, CERTA would like for us to do is um, purchase um, a, a time machine that we can use to load these Breeze cards. Um, We'll pay two dollars for each breeze card, and, and we'll pass that fee on to the customer. So we'll charge twenty-seven for a twenty-five dollar card. But with this machine, we can load any amount on it that the customer wants us to load, and it'll be um, express funds that we load. We won't be able to load MARTA funds unless MARTA gets involved and gives us permission to load MARTA, fund, MARTA funds. But in the beginning, we'll be able to load breeze card funds. The cost of the machine is twenty-six thousand dollars, and. Mm, they have asked us to pay 16 of that. Gary said that uh, we do have 12,800 that we can come up with through our grants, so we would not need to do any budget amendments to the 2018 budget to purchase this. We went through the IS committee um, at their last meeting, and they are all on board with it and um, willing to work with CERTA to get that machine in our building so that we can sell the Breeze cards to these customers. The, the one good thing of, about it is if we do get this machine, and right now all of our sales go through our credit card machine, which means the county is incurring all the fees for the credit card machine. Once we get this their machine in here, they will be incurring all those fees. The county won't incur the fees um, anymore for the credit card machine that we do now. We'll just have to, you know, whatever the van pullers use, but most of our sales on those credit card machines are express customers. So that will help us tremendously there, not to mention give us another avenue for assisting those people that ride the express bus. So total cost is 16,000, 12 eights grant funded, and the rest is Gary has in the budget. Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. The actual cost of the machine is 26, but they're asking yeah. us to pick up 16 out of those. 16. Mm -hmm. Gary said we have 12 eight 
that our grant money that we can use. Okay. And you would not need any budget amendments. Okay. Right. So stay with me. How many people you currently serve? How many people are currently served? Whoa. In the voucher program. Mm -hmm. And the buses. We right now, just those ten ride passes, we, we sell over two hundred of those a month. Back to scale. Here we go, Commissioner. Yes. There it is. There's your information right there. Uh, what's that bottom number? Bottom number is over a year. Uh, you're doing just under 2,400, like Jerry said. Average is about 200 a month. The reason I say that, Commissioner, I'm just mm -hmm. I'm thinking, all right, we, for, for basically 200 a month, we're paying 26,000 for this machine, right? Which is, um, which I have no problem with. This it's like, okay, how do I optimize its use, right? And so we're, so I'm going to come back up to this whole point. And I, I actually had broached this and had a very lengthy conversation one night, probably almost one o'clock, I'm not sure about it. We have to be prepared to tap into this broader system, Marta, Grace Car, whoever it is. Um, uh, continuity of connectivity because I guess my question is while we're working on this one component of the program which is the vouchers you've got this other one coming online so how are we aligning the technology to be seamless because if we're going to go in aren't we doing it all at once and that's and that's exactly what we're trying to do and we have a representative here from a certain I believe right, uh, yes, sir. that can go over the benefits of that and why this is not only a, 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 an urgent need because of the circumstances, but also a long-term uh, fit for what we're trying to do. The reason I add, again, we can have a conversation. Sure. And as I think about, um, we're connecting into our friends over at Cobb, and I, you know, again, I would, again, recognize what you just talked about was about you, and I understand, but I, I'm just trying to uh, align these um, these offerings, which is, uh, I don't want to go to order papers, but an, an incompatible, connect, right? Then I got to get over to, if, if I'm going east, I mean, that has nothing to do with me going around internally, but how do we make sure that if we're going to really talk about regionalism, we really talk about aligning, um, technology has to be the, co the common denominator, right? That's, that's that, if it, that one, I don't care what we call ourselves as brands, a house of brands, a brands of coffee, you know, that whole conversation, mm -hmm. but the technology has got to be this, this trail system that, you know, talk to me about. Absolutely, and, and that is exactly what this is about, because uh, the intent on a regional basis is that uh, if if you have access to the Douglas County service, uh, that same card you can use in Cobb, Marta, throughout the system. So all right. all of this, everybody's headed in the same direction now. Grease cards are something that's been in use for a while. Right. It may not necessarily be what is in use four years, five years from now, but for the time being, that is what that is the commonality amongst all the systems in the area. That's where we're headed. And once they purchase that grease card, they can go online or to a Marta kiosk and load all the Marta funds or, or Cobb County funds or any other funds that they want onto that card, as well as the Douglas County funds that are on there for the Express. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need it all the time. We get on three right there, um, right there, Riverside, we head over to home, swipe, swipe, and I'm, I'm off to the races. So I, I get it, but the average citizen may not know this broad right. access. Um, One thing we have done, Commissioner, is, yes. well, I've got about a 15 minute presentation as to why we're doing this. Yeah, it's okay with this? Who's smoke here? I'm fine. Okay. And this will answer a lot of the questions that I, I think you've got. And I'll certainly be glad to answer any others you've got. We're lucky uh, being in here because we've been in our public outreach for a year now. So we've gone through three campaigns and we're about to go into a fourth. And Jerry and Gary have been wonderful in terms of, of working with us. and making sure that, that we're able to partner with, with Douglas County. We really appreciate that. But a lot of these things were things that have already gone out to the public. So bottom line, what's changing? Currently we take cash on the buses, we take breeze cards, and we take these magnetic tickets. 
Uh, after the year's end, we're not going to take the magnetic tickets any longer. The reason is the technology is getting very old. It's getting very costly to keep it up. Uh, you really can't even get it anymore. So we're going with new fare boxes on the buses. The installations will start after the first of the year, and those fare boxes don't take the magnetic tickets. So we have to change. But there are a lot of good things about changing. We will, by the way, still take cash on the bus. That's not changing. Benefits of the card. Balance protection. If you lose your magnetic ticket, too bad, so sad, you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. uh, if you lose your priest card or it gets stolen, as long as you've registered it, and that's very easy to do at priestcard.com, we can restore what was on there and basically get you back up and running so you're not out because something happened. You left it in the grocery store, somebody saw it and picked it up. It's not happening anymore. The tap and go boarding, I have been told by our drivers, is definitely a major benefit. It happens quickly. You don't need a new breeze card each time. And that's the main reason Jerry was saying our temporary solution to keep you all up and running of just preloading breeze cards isn't that good because you get a new breeze card each time with that. If you get the time machine or we teach people how to load online, it's they don't have to get that every time. You can add value, as Jerry or somebody already said, at any MARTA station, or you can do it online. Uh, you don't need the exact change on the bus, and you get free transfers to MARTA. In other words, if you start on our system and tap in on our system here in Douglas County, and then let's say you connect to the MARTA rail, when you tap in with your Breeze card, you've got a free transfer on to MARTA. In the afternoon, if you're coming home, it works in reverse. If you tap on the MARTA with a breeze card, when you tap on to the express bus with a breeze card, we don't hit you with a trip. Now, you're going to need a MARTA product when you start at MARTA. You're going to need a breeze product when you start with us. Yeah. But let's say you have 10 right on us and 10 right on MARTA, and you just started. You tap in here at Douglas. We deduct one from your... Uh, Breeze account, yep. but when you tap in at MARTA, one's not deducted for MARTA. Coming home, when you tap in at MARTA, one's deducted from your MARTA account. But when you tap in at Breeze, one's not deducted Breeze. All right, so stay with me. Sure. Is, this, this. So um, I'm riding at 10, whatever the case may be, I get right there at the epicenter of Riverside. Okay. I tap into the number 30 at Cobb. I'm going to 18 homes. I gotta go through the turnstile, come up the stairs, and I mean, you know, get through there, mm -hmm. tap again. That's twice. Right. And so, am I? Am I being deducted? I mean, I heard the one transfer. That's a double transfer. How does that impact me? It doesn't. Uh, you can do up to. I'm not sure, Commissioner, if it's three or four. Okay. But as long as you're moving in the same direction. Now, what you can't do is is be going uh, east and then decide, well, I'm going to go west instead. That won't work. Yeah, that's a revert. Okay, so the yeah. system knows, it's acknowledged, so I'm, I'm not being swiped because, you know, it's like, you give them. Yes, sir, sure do. All right. And the system should be telling you uh, and should be handling that. If it's not, please let us know. Got it. Keep on. Keep on. And my understanding is, too, that, that there's a time window that yes. you have to do that. Part. Yes, sir. I believe it's three hours. Yeah. Uh, that you've, you've got to do to it. To continue so. the first way. Correct. Yes, sir. Right. Then I got to work and you want to come home eight hours later, then I get to. Okay. Yeah, but again, the transfer should be free back onto our system. Okay. It's just an arrangement between CERTA and uh, uh, MARTA that they've said basically, okay, it washes out. We don't want to charge people twice. So I kind of like it. I, I hear yeah. MARTA and CERTA, but again, one more time, Cobb and it's for something. Cobb, like Cobb is, a, is a different beast right now. Okay. Uh, so if you're transferring on Cobb, that's a different thing than if you're transferring on the MARTA. But the vision that you've got, Commissioner, of yes. a region-wide service is definitely shared by CERTA, and we're seeing strong indications that it's shared by everybody else. So it's coming. All right, so it, is it, okay, I'm, this is just more of us. Is this yes, something we need to note? Um, it, it sounds like it's not as compatible as I, I thought maybe in his opening comments three minutes ago, but now I'm feeling a little a different kind of way that, uh, like you said, it's a different beast. We're negotiating, I mean, we're going to enter into toss directly with Cobb. And so, uh, again, that means we're going to have a, a 
two experience sets, right? I got ours, we gotta go through Cobb, and then I get back aligned. And how do we ensure that we can make this a seamless experience, right? This should just, you know, sort of what Senator Beat said, like, okay, when you come into Atlanta Hartsville Airport, I want y'all, when y'all hit that system, that no matter where you are, it's seamless, right? That was the vision that he got to applaud for down at the General Assembly. So I guess I'm, how do we get there? And, and that, that is the ultimate goal that, that is shared by the entire region. The, the, the ATL eventually. Uh, but in the meantime. It, in the meantime, we're going to have to have discussion and, and, and how we accomplish it. My understanding is that the COB already has um, some use of lease cars. They do. Yes, so, so it's not totally incompatible, but we would have to then uh, figure out how, how the transfer is deducted from our system programs. And that would require, I, and I think everybody's looking at it, but you've already talked about the fact it would require some type of agreement between Douglas County and Cobb County, between CERTA and Douglas County, which really already pretty well exists, and then between everybody and Martin. And just, you were saying that uh, we don't know what this uh, technology is going to be in four years. My gut is we'll still have green cards, but one of the things that's under very active development and has actually been deployed periodically in test mode is to allow mobile devices to provide the, the services. So that's another thing that's coming. But that's way down the road. Mar well, not way down the road. MARTA's trying to get it implemented. I believe they're shooting to have it implemented at least partially for the Super Bowl. Uh, and the CERTA will follow on right behind once MARTA gets it up and running. And I would imagine going with what to do. No, I, I appreciate that concept about technology. But as you know, everybody doesn't necessarily have a cell phone. They more have a landline. But it's the disparity that if your phone is off, you still got to get to work, right? So you still got to be able to keep it. So it's not going to be one's going to replace the other. They're going to be parallel. I agree with uh, you, sir. So they will coexist. Okay. I agree. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Okay. So there's some benefits. Now, this is the big one that we've been pushing out to everybody, and there will be a final push on the buses uh, with hang tags and uh, decals on the buses, on the inside of the buses. Uh, starting in October, that as of December 31st, 2018, yeah. that's it. You got to have a breeze card of cash, the magnetics will no longer work. Now, the overwhelming majority of the magnetic cards that are out there have placed on the back of them expires December 31st, 2018. There were a few that were put out many, many years ago, but I've actually seen one in circulation that have a different expiration date or have no expiration date. Uh, as nicely as I can say this, we're still not going to be able to take it after December 31st, 2018. Literally, uh, once the fare box is replaced, we'll not have the ability to take it. There are very few of those, but it's one reason we have hit this campaign uh, so hard. And we'll be doing a final push to let people know. All right, what's not changing is anything that you can get on the 10 ride, you can get on the Breeze card. And here, that's going to be a lot of the 10 ride greens. That's what you saw a tremendous amount of. But anything else, Jerry talked about the 31 day pass. Uh, you can get a round trip, you can get a single ride, whatever you want. You can, you can load onto that card. And this is what the time machine will let you do here. And you can load, load a cash balance also. So we talked about the security increases. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. It's just it, using a, a stolen breeze card is one of the dumb things you can do, quite frankly, because it's going to get hot listed in the system. Use the current magnetics. Again, that December 31st, 2018 date, or the expiration on the card, whichever is first, which means it's going to be December 31st, 2018. We have stopped selling magnetic tickets with now two exceptions. Douglas County had been a third uh, exception, but uh, we don't sell those to the general public in our walk-up anymore. Uh, we don't sell those through our employer programs. We provided y'all, and we really appreciate your, your working with us. We provided y'all with preloaded breeze cards. We do still have Georgia State selling a few with high, high warnings that 
anything you buy now, it's going to be bad after December 31st. And there's one company in Atlanta that makes some internal changes that require them to back up a little bit. We started uh, selling our race cars this evening. Wonderful. Well, we'll go ahead and keep the magnetics just in case. We've got another thousand that are on order, but just in case we run short, don't don't send back those magnetics quite yet. If anybody asks you to let me know, I'll, I'll talk to them. I don't think they will. I, I want to go back to real yes, quick. You said we serve 200 vouchers per month. We sell about 200 of the 10 ride um, bus oh. passes per month, oh. and on 31 day, you know, just make it five a month or sometimes three. Most of them are all those 10 rides is what we say. Um, we were trying to get a feel yesterday about um, our seniors. Did we ever get that number, Mark? What, what, what we actually, how many people we actually served and how many were in the queue? The voucher program. The voucher program. No, sir, I didn't get the number. I know the one that's got about 150 on the So Maybe double, we've got about double. Mm -hmm. I know we funded extra. Yes. Additional. Yes. We just want, we just, I'm trying to frame as I hear these numbers and capacity and stuff. So, okay, keep going. All right. All right. Uh, available at the walk up center, uh, it's online at expressj.com. MARTA breeds vending machines and MARTA online. Now, the reason I've got it broken down like that is right now, in fact, through October 31st, you can get a free breeze card. So, and it also impacts what y'all give out here in Douglas County, you sell in Douglas County. Anything you sell before October 31st, SERTA is picking up the cost of the piece card. So you don't get charged that and your folks don't get charged, charged that. If you get it through MARTA or through a Breeze vending machine or online, they do charge you two bucks for the card. So get it from us for a while. Get a little bit of a deal. You don't need a new breeze card each month. We talked about that. That's one of the huge advantages to it. Uh, also, since you can load MARTA products, although you couldn't with your time machine, they can be loaded online, you only need one breeze card. You don't need a breeze card for Express and a breeze card for MARTA. The system's smart enough that it automatically knows which one you're, you're getting on. So you don't need to. Now, one advantage of getting several grease cards, quite frankly, we don't advertise this, and I know Jerry doesn't, but hey, you know, if you purchase five to carry you over, well, you've got enough for your family. Uh, and they can be used, they can be loaded, it's, it's great. And we're very happy about that. Now, we've already talked about everything here, but I want to point out, because we're going to talk about it in a second, this, for those of you who haven't seen it, that's a breeze, full-blown breeze vending machine. They're very expensive, but they're, they're nice. They, they do a lot. You're, you're going to get the cost in just a minute. Uh, you guys are a consignment vendor. In other words, basically, you sell an inventory of what we provide you. You pay, pay us for that after you sell it. Uh, with the time machine, that's going to come faster. Uh, basically, we get paid, we all get paid, we're not out any money, uh, but it just, it's going to make it a little cleaner, a little bit easier. Uh, we love your transportation center. I've been doing this kind of work for three decades. Your transportation center for a suburban transportation center, heck, for an urban transportation center. It's gorgeous. I wish my day started here, to tell you the truth. And I think your expansion is going to be wonderful. I'm not just Apple Polish in here. You've got a great transportation center. Okay, there are three options that we presented, and uh, we kind of narrowed it down to just the time machine. But we can provide you with cards preloaded. We can continue to do that. The downside is we're going to start charging you too much for those cards, and that's that's not good for anybody. You can do a ticket office machine or a breeze vending machine is also an option that could be put into your transportation center. And you may go, why not? Well, it's the cost. $305,000 is the projected cost for a breeze vending machine, plus an additional $4,000 per month to handle all your clearing machines. Plus, Marta's got to service it. 
plus, 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 plus. Okay, look, you can see them numbers again, 305. 305, 250, that includes your first month with uh, banking and clearing house. Yep. And then 4000 per month in maintenance? Yes, it, basically in your uh, banking costs and your clearing house. I mean, that's the licensing part. Right. Yeah, sorry. and I don't know how much more we charge with the service machine. Yeah. There, there would be an additional cost there. Yeah. But this is part and of the And they would have to agree to put it out there, right? Yeah, they'd have to agree. Now, if you all are willing to pay the money, I bet you they would. But you're also going to have to put in a lot more technology than I think you currently have in your center. So there Which is. What, this is where my, my comment came from again. How do we line that up, even though we may not, we may or may not eat it today out the gate. I don't align ourselves knowing that that's where it's going. I mean, but we would certainly have to keep it, yeah. keep this in mind for the longer term, but for the volume of service that we provide, uh, the, the ridership that we have, yep. the time machine would be plenty fine for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't disagree. I think Commissioner Mulcair, you know, should we, you know, go go to the ballot when we expand this? I think that's probably when we make that type of investment. The T spots will cover, but yeah, you know, I need your opinion. You know, no, I I, I agree with Miguel. Uh, looking looking at just our total ridership, we're not, we're not talking about uh, you know downtown Atlanta. There's huge volumes of people coming through the to the company the vending machine. Uh, looking at our numbers, what I think you know what I believe the numbers are right now. I'm, Seems to me like the, uh, the Tom machine is, is within our spectrum where we are today. Yeah. In our pilot program. And for a while. And yeah. I, I think for a while. You tell me still. All right. same thing. Thank you. Keep going. Without a problem. And just real quickly, you've already heard the 26000 on the, the Tom machine. SERTA uh, has agreed to pick up 10000 of that. Uh, your service routers have three years of support built in, and SERTA will cover your monthly cellular costs and your monthly merchant fee costs. So you don't have those. See, we do currently now that merchant fee. Mm -hmm. it, it is about anywhere between three twenty seven and three fifty four a month. And the majority of that fee is for express riders because most of the van coolers now go online and pay online. Mm -hmm. And Ron was back there he set the online payment up and that's that's the way most of our van coolers pay now. So most of the fees that we have through that machine are for express workers. That's a Tom machine. If it looks like a computer, there's a reason it looks like a computer. Uh, and literally, it's the input information goes here. Once that's in, you tap the breeze card here, just like you would when you get on the bus. It's loaded. And congratulations, everything's done. It takes about a minute. Right, so like a breeze, I mean, the one in Martin, the breeze is a big old machine, like a corona machine. Is that as big or is that more that Much desktop? smaller. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like, uh, you know, that's a, I believe it's a 17-inch computer screen, a standard size keyboard. Yep. And you'll actually, Jerry and her folks will actually be the ones doing the input here. Oh, so it's not self. No. It's, it's not, not me doing so it. Yeah. You guys are. Yeah, we'll be doing it. Uh, yeah, that's okay. It's control. Yeah. With our volume, we should be okay. And we're looking at problem. putting it um, either on the front counter if we have room so that we can face them, or if we don't, um, we may have to put it on the back counter. But like we do now, mm -hmm. when we sell the passes. But yeah. now, I'm not sure if I ever said, Tom is just simply means ticket off this machine. You know, it's not exactly one of your wonderful other things. There are your sales. We already talked about that, about 200 a month on average. Yep. Uh, here are your payment methods. Uh, most of your payments, as Jerry has said, do come in via credit card or debit card. You're taking in relatively small amounts of cash, but you've got that capability for the unbanked, which we think is very important. So glad to see that. Uh, we do think that the number of transactions will likely tend to drop not the number of riders, but as people realize that they can do these online, uh, it may drop. We're really thrilled, though, that you're, you're thinking about the time machine, especially for the unbanked. We, we just, you know, online for unbanked just does not work. 
Uh, we did say that water products are currently available on the time machine. That might be able to be changed. Uh, through discussions with MARTA. You don't have to contact MARTA on that, but this does run through their system, which brings up another point that I want to make. This, this is the last slide. Uh, MARTA is basically going to shut down for everything except super, now I'm talking about their back office and their, their folks in the back office, shut down for everything except Super Bowl as of November 1st. And they have to do some work in terms of being able to verify this machine. Now we can keep you all going indefinitely on the on the breeze cards, the pre-printed breeze cards. But if there were any way for the for the board to act and say yes, we want to do this, yes, we've got the commitment that we could start things humming, uh, you know, really as soon as possible, maybe after the October uh, board meeting. Uh, that would be wonderful after the October 2nd. If not, we can keep you supplied with the breeze cards. You're not going to be in a situation where your folks can't get what they need. Uh, but it sure would be nice if we could go ahead and get that time machine operating as fast as possible. This was something I did not know when we met with the technology committee. So this is new information that I wanted to bring forward today. Yeah, we, we, at least you, Mark, you guys have breached us in that committee, meaning the top in general. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Roll, yeah. I mean, again, we can swat it back to them and say we would support this. I mean, obviously, there's a cost associated with this. Let's get it on the table and in front of the full board. What do you think? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, we need to just make a recommendation on this to continue. Uh, we, we can make a recommendation to send it back to the the technology committee that we're in support of this? I mean, how do y'all want to structure this? If we haven't studied it, we, I haven't, you know, other than this, I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm trusting Take that. Uh, I think, frankly, if this uh, operation falling more under transportation than technology, uh, I would think that that recommendation from this committee ought to suffice to be able to get it to the board. Uh, and I, I don't see yeah. it. It's not a young term technology. Uh -huh. that yeah. so. I agree. It's only a date change versus a technology issue, so I think we should be able to work with it. Right. So, can I get a motion? Go ahead. Um, motion to proceed with purchase of a tunnel machine at the uh, at the cost provided, and we'll, we'll get those in the minutes. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Are we going to put this on out? Make this recommendation to the full board for what meeting? Um, that'll be up October 2nd. Next, uh, next one. Next one. October 2nd. Great. With the intent to have a decision by November 1st? That just well, happened. actually, we don't just need to, we got to get the machine in by November 1st. Mm -hmm. Right. So we need to put that condition around the fact that once we make a decision, we got to go. Right. So I think if we if we have the approval by October second, we should be. Oh, I think we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I think we'll, and I'm going to go ahead and alert Mar based on the action taken today that we're going to be looking in October uh, for them to do. Mm -hmm. That was shooting for October thirty first day, right? Yes, ma'am. If at all possible. Okay. Right. So that date uh, on the board commission meeting to purchase this machine uh, at what dollar amount? You're going to put that in there, right? To 16000 with 12800 coming, uh, coming from the grant, 32000 coming from the budget. My pre existing budget. All right, just want to make sure we have that. Existing budget. Mm -hmm. So let the record reflect that's the full motion. Mm -hmm. uh, being up. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody sustain or decline? Now, do you enter those uh, on the agenda, or is Gary in them? Gary does. Okay. Now, you can, I can, you can take care of We have to get it on there by Friday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gary, I will be out of town in a second, but if y'all would like a representative, I'll see what I can do. Can we please, we, we, uh, Miguel, mm -hmm. can we have a representative join us just for the full board's conversation? Because this was actually pretty good. It was just that alone. Mm -hmm. out of, uh, yeah, I think that was, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, it would be worth it. Commissioner, yeah. we'll make it happen. Thank you. All right, anything else you want? Um, you want to release him if he needs to get back? Um, we're good? We're good. 
It's a pleasure working with y'all. Thank you so much. This was good. Good, good information. Thank you, sir. Very good. All right. We go. Keep going. Yes, sir. Um, related to the fixed bus route service, we have a couple items. Uh, uh, one is informational, and one is a funding consideration. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll deal with the funding consideration. Uh, and that is that we have to uh, consider uh, additional buses. We have, as you know, an inventory. We have about a total of four. Yep. The service as it stands now, uh, as part of our last uh, Thank you. Discussion? Thank you. Uh, we indicated that, uh, that, in fact, I think at the last meeting of memory search, we did bring this out in uh, There was no decision made at the time, but uh, we do have to, to uh, because of the timeline, to get the, uh, uh, the items ordered and delivered. Uh, we have gone through in conjunction with the third party operator and uh, looked at the routes uh, preliminarily, driven the routes. I wrote, I didn't find it, uh, wrote along, and uh, so we uh, believe that it's going to take at least six vehicles to roll out service on March uh, 2019, a minimum of six. Uh, Which brings us to 10. Well, so here, additional. This well, here's here's how how, how it will work. It, it, there's four routes, yes, and two of the routes need two buses to do one iteration, one uh, round right. trip, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to keep it within the, the headway that we're looking for. Sorry, uh, because of the because of the distance uh, that we're that we're traversing. So it's going to take uh, six buses to roll out in the morning. Yep. Now the issue is that we have, in reality, because of, we have 12 hours of service, is going to take two sets of buses, if you will, to be able to uh, be, be uh, rolling from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So the ultimate, the ultimate rollout is going to require 12 buses. Uh, we have four. We're going to need uh, to order eight additional buses. Now, to do that, or uh, I'm saying buses, really they're cutaways, but um, the total, we, there is grant funding available that we have secured. Uh, the total cost for the eight additional buses or cutaways would be 504,000, and 403,200 is uh, available from, uh, from federal funding. We also have to, as part of our ongoing discussion and, and uh, branding exercise, uh, tag those cutaways. Yep. We've had uh, some preliminary discussions as to whether the, the wrapping is going to be extensive as you uh, would consider something that actually encroaches on some of the windows and uh, wraps around the entire vehicle, yep. or something less intrusive that perhaps has a county uh, service logo, Douglas Connect, and it may have some other additional display, but not necessarily be a total wrapper. Okay. One of the reasons why we're considering uh, the, the two options is, as you might be aware, I'm sure you were, from, from the discussions for the ATL rollout, <coughs> they are looking for all of the services in the region to be branded uh, similarly, not necessarily identically. They have not decided yet, because obviously the board has not uh, been uh, formulated quite yet, uh, one of the first items they're going to have to do is make a decision as to branding because there are so many different systems that they're going to have to bring under the same umbrella. It is possible that they will decide that 
they are going to leave things as they are for the most part, but add a logo that says ATL. So that whether you're in Douglas County or Cobb County or Gwinnett County, when you're going to get on a bus, it will have the ATL Atlanta Transit Link uh, branding on it, in addition to Gwinnett or Cobb Link or Douglas Connect. I think it, to your point, it's almost like Intel inside or Android phone or whatever. Something. It doesn't matter what the brand is. Exactly. So brought them in. Okay, all right. Exactly. Okay. So, so that, that is one possible outcome. Now, another possible outcome would be that they figured, no, we would, we would rather have a consistent brand. And then that would, in, I guess it would entail either phasing out over time or wrapping uh, over the logos that exist on the various systems. I don't know, I, I can't predict how it will go. My sense would be that because of the expenditure, they probably will gradually introduce the ATL branding. Um, so from our, from our perspective, um, I think as we get closer to making a decision on, on the wrapping for the bus, that we certainly have to leave room for another logo. We throw away. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Um, Commissioner Mulk here. Um, and you, you're an operations guy, so I heard two mm -hmm. by two, two. I'm, you know, I'm trying to process, you know, what are you hearing? Is that sufficient uh, as a structure, a fleet structure? The support we need again. I'm well, I, yeah, I think we have to rely on our, on the expertise of our uh, operator, and so I had no I had no question of the uh, four plus eight okay. uh, figure. Uh, you know, in terms of the identity, the, the packaging, that's entirely up in the air. I think maybe the direction you're going is maybe some estimates on what you know what total wrapping would cost per vehicle versus uh, uh, minimal. Uh, identification and that sort of thing and that's yet to be determined so it's going to be what it's going that part's going to be what it's going to be right well we we do have some some sense of what a, a wrapping uh, for a vehicle that size may run us and we do have some numbers on that uh, uh, we believe that it's going to is going to essentially be about three thousand per vehicle so it's right. thirty six thousand then we already had that in our, we, we had that on our and, and I think that we, we may have had that number before, and again, mm -hmm. there's federal funding available for that. The uh, 28,800 of that would be covered by federal funding. Yeah, I don't want us to, I, for the committee record, this is not a new topic. Correct. We talked about this before. Um, we just took no action, but it was broached. Mm -hmm. um, Commission Mold here, so it sounds like we got to put up a match of about 100 grand. Mm -hmm. Do the, we have that somewhere in the calendar? The, 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 uh, the match to do the cutaways, uh, to order the cutaways and the, the wraps, estimated at 3000 piece. It could be less depending on the extent of what we ultimately decide on. But uh, the county's, ex well, the total cost would be 558000 Okay. And of that, 446400 would be federal funds. And the county exposure, the need to ask is for 111,600. All right, all right. So if it's 112. Does it? I don't have to have. Our, do we have access first to the capital transportation fund to front this? Is that were these items that were already included in the budget? No, they were not. Wait. Mm -hmm. All right, so one more time. Let's as far as the balance, to answer the question. As far as the Sorry. balance, the, the, yes. uh, the federal funding is in place, but yes. it's not the county manager. I want to go back to our budget process. For real this year, mm -hmm. so one of us had this conversation about, and I, I think it was with Gary before he left, which is we had buses in, just stopped the whole vote, guys, and it was taken out. Mm -hmm. And I insisted that I said, put it back in, and now put a, a contingent not to exceed five. Remember the whole conversation of five hundred thousand? That was all. I mean, so it was three forty something and some change. And I'm like, no, I need to put them buses back in. And if the vote doesn't go for it, 
then okay, that, that, that makes sense. But I, we need to, I thought we had the money. In other words, what am I missing? And I have a similar recollection. What I don't know is what ultimately was included in the budget that was adopted. Yeah, that I yeah. have to confirm that. I still have it in front of yeah. me. It's okay. Yeah. The budget kind of got a clean sweep on a lot of things. So. Say that again, Mike? I said the budget got a clean sweep, a house cleaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So let, let's, let's confirm this. Do we need to take action? So it sounds like we need to move. We would, we would need to. Uh, so what's the okay, what's the secondary source in the event that there is not um, an additional hundred, which I'm, I'm almost willing to bet, um, this additional money, Mark, is it in our department budget? Do we need to go deeper? Can no. you do? No, it has an important budget. budget. CTF. There, there's a balance in the CTF now. Mm -hmm. Of course, that balance is not enough to cover multiple phases of a lot of projects that have already well, how we how started we a long time ago. But and, and in fact, that's an item coming up yeah. for discussion. Well, and to that point, the Commission will care. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we replenish what we said in motion. You know that, that we made that commitment when we gave that five hundred thousand to the general fund. That was just not to me. It was it was. Gracious to help support the overall yeah. new strategies going, but it's that, go that we we that it, you know we work to get that there, and, and so um, it's for moments like this that it should be there. But again, we're going to be sacrificial. This is our offline conversation, but can we make sure we bring that back up? Oh yeah. So I, so the question is, assuming that we can get can we those priorities that you currently have, and we'll talk about them. But I guess just to close this one out is that well. And we reprioritize, we need to do this right now because it's urgent. If something is pushed off into the new budget process and we can replenish, can we survive? Well, you tell me that everything that's on that list that you're saying that get that is spread out is all we're going to do this year. No, we wouldn't be doing this year. It's, it's going to be doing 2019. So do we may have some room. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I'm, I'm okay. So do we need to take an action with the buses to move forward? Well, we would need to identify if the funding is already in the budget. It's already in the budget. And it, is, is it. it would be an administrative concurrence. I would think. Well, we need confirmation on this. So do you imagine the ability? Right. That's yes. what we're talking about. We got the federal funds. We need to match. Yeah. And I'm thinking that we should have the 112 or whatever, 111, and some change. Um, sitting there. Right. And if it's and if it's there, then, then we, I guess we would need a recommendation before. To, to go forward, to order the bus, the, leave the, the bus is leaving the station. The bus is already right. going. Mm -hmm. So let's do it this way. I make a recommendation that um, I make a recommendation that we use uh, um, the appropriate. We we purchase the buses with federal funds with the local county match of roughly one hundred twelve thousand dollars, and we're going to we've identified the source being the capital transportation fund. Um, and, and, and as that, and if it's not there. And we can always come back later, but that's it. That's that's the recommendation. It's either there or it's not. Or you could say, you could say first the existing budget if it's included, right. and if not, then the cap transportation fund. Then we're included in, but we're included on budget. Or I can go check real quick and see if it's in there. I prefer not to be too squishy. I want to be definitive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's take a pause with this right now. Okay, Mark, can you plan it? Yeah, I'll be right back. Can you talk about something else? Yeah, so no good. absolutely. Well, I mean, I can add to, to, the, to the issue of the capital funding, transportation fund funding. That's an item coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a little out of sequence, but. Uh, okay, well, I can talk about uh, something a little more pleasant the resurfacing program with sure. uh, the contractor, she told me, Matthews. Started, uh, in fact, today on uh, North Helton Road. You that you, Mike? No. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, but uh, after that, they're going to go to Big Gaylor. So you start. Okay. You start in west and come in east. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, the expectation is that they're going to be dedicating enough forces to perhaps within six weeks have this thing uh, wrapped up. 
So let me, let me ask the question now. I mean, just, just, it's October, basically. Yep. Why are we so late? I mean, but what am I missing here that I, I just, we went all summer, it's been dry. We mean, we had some rain and so forth, but it's, for the most part, it's been dry. Now we're at the back end, we're going into fall this weekend, and we're just starting. Why, why are we, it feels like we're getting a short end, like, what they got stuff to do, to, like, we'll get to you later. I'm just not feeling us as a priority. I'm thinking when we award stuff at the beginning of the year, you're going to be ready for us to take this work on, but not to cue us six months later. Am I missing something? I'm well, just, let, me, let me offer uh, some insight into that. Uh, I think, obviously, we awarded the contract probably about six weeks ago. So, so they, they've known that, uh, that they are now the, the, the selected uh, contractor. Only when you award the contractor, they put you in their queue. And there is so much work going on out there that they have a roster of projects already. And so when you, when you come in, uh, once you make the award, you're really looking at getting behind that line, that behind that queue, that's already there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it used to be that you that they were hungrier and uh, they didn't have as much work and you could get them out quicker. Uh, but uh, nowadays with the volume of work that's out there. Uh, no, is, I, is I, I, so, yeah. so, so that's, a, that's, that's driving part of this. Right, okay, but I still challenge why are we just not awarding contracts when we had all, in, but I get you. All right, and that wasn't unreasonable. If we just did that six weeks ago, beginning of August, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you that. What happened to July, June, May, April? Why couldn't we get it out then? I mean, I, I just don't hear why we're our priority is our priority. I don't, I can't, I can't take um, comfort in being concerned about other counties' jurisdiction. It's like, look, we want this done now. Where are you at? And you know, it, it's, I just. We're, it's almost like we're waiting, just, we're, we're being dealt our hand by the marketplace. And I, I just don't get it. I, I just, it's like, okay, that's just the way it is. But then how does everybody else get in queue then? Why can't we get further up the queue or faster up the queue? I mean, because I, we get comments like, well, when y'all going to resurface everybody? Yeah. And we could, we could. I mean, we could certainly back the process up and start at the end of this year with a list that gets circulated. Why do we take so long, Mike? Why do we take so long? I mean, we used to do, I mean, this is for you, it's okay. We used to do the LMIG during the budget process. Mm -hmm. By December, we didn't came out with a list. They already, you know, they come out the gate hopping for transportation. Uh, January, we didn't, it's on the agenda. We're, we're moving. Yeah. Why, why, are we, why, are we, why do we regress with this? There's probably more of the SPLOS, because I know there's, these are two separate, I, but why are yeah. I, I think on the, L, on the LMIG component is because we're dragging with stuff from last year, because we, we, we didn't finish. But you're still moving, moving is the point. But we're it's all relative. It, it, exactly, we are, we are moving, and we, we recognize that we're not gonna be able to get to the new uh, batch of roads until perhaps sometime in the middle of the year. So one way to eliminate that, and we've had some internal discussions about that, is potentially with the 2019 version or batch of roads, actually bidding part of that out. Let's do it. Uh, because then we can be doing part of the workload. We're gonna, hopefully not too many, but we're gonna run into the spring with some of the roads from this year's batch. And so I think maybe that's that's the way to do it. it the, the dollars will not stretch as far, but it will catch us up. And so that, that is an option. I'm just trying to push, I'm, I'm just... And again, so then it comes back to, uh, and I appreciate you, you know, one year later in your anniversary, do, do you have the capacity, people-wise, to fulfill the expectations that perhaps the board has? So it's more of a, we know what we're asking, but do you have the organizational capacity to fulfill this? Yeah. And I think once we get us to where not we're addressing the current year's workload, we should be able to handle it fine. Uh, but we but need it grows to get, though, right? It doesn't just go away. You move, the, the 
current year stacks until you get to the year to the prior year. I mean, how well, do you how that, do you get ahead? Well, that's what I'm suggesting that maybe we we looking ahead to the outsourcing. To some outsourcing, part. Mike, you okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way we can because one of the things that we haven't been able to get to, which we normally do in house, we would because it is a maintenance item, is um, right. So, uh, which is why I need to be on all. The time. Exactly. There, there are some roads that, you know, we, we're patching the potholes. The problem is the fix, the permanent fix, is not patching a bunch of potholes. Mm -hmm. Just to go in there and actually do some maintenance and do an over. I, 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 this is where I can't let this go, Mike, and again, I'm going to appreciate your time while you're still here. I, again, why are we trying to get in the paving business? It's just we don't have the capacity. We should be able to flex up, flex down. We should focus on... We got dinged today about maintenance on lead roll. We get, get dinged all the time about Riverside. I'm sure I'm not the only area. But it's like, okay, our staff should be dedicated. It should be like, maybe so. We, we swoop in, we do what we got to do, we get out. But it's like we're trying to build this capacity that, like, it, it's, it's like it, it's moving along, but it's like, come on, guys, why don't we let the professionals do what they do and we focus on what we're doing? Why are we, and we're rationalizing the drag. And we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. It's like, why are we? Why are we in that business? I still. Well, let me let me push please. back a little bit. I, I, I think it's appropriate for a county to be in, in the paving business in in the correct bandwidth. Small, right? You know, in, in the correct bandwidth and, and types of roads. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them could be, you know, you pave instead of major pothole replacement. You know, you actually actually pave a, a segment or of a subdivision road or a minor road, that sort of thing. So I think it's entirely appropriate for the county to have, okay. have some capacity to do paving. We've got a great paving machine, mm -hmm. uh, training staff, and, and, and the best equipment now in this state of water right now this, this year. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, absolutely we need to stay in it. But if we can expand our, our capability by, by outsourcing, uh, then I think it, it bears ex exploration. Uh, realize, you know, this, it's the same old mantra. We we can pay more roads cheaper than we can pay somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. So you know we can we can spend uh, uh, you know six hundred dollars a uh, a mile or uh, excuse me or a quarter mile or whatever. We we pay somebody else you know fourteen fourteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I know that's out of scale, but we money amounts. But the point point being, we could just we could we could pay it a lot cheaper than we could pay somebody to pay. Mm -hmm. But is it the right job? Yeah. Plus, we're down. We're hurting right now because we're down employees. How I many? You know exactly how many. We're, we're down about we're six, down. six six employees. So I'm, I'm yes, back to my point about capacity. So while I appreciate the spirit of the conversation, right, and I, I get your point, which is potholes, cul-de-sacs. You know, let's come up with something less than a hundred yards. Let our staff go in there and do it. Quarter that. mile. Quarter yeah. mile. That's fine. Quarter mile. But I'm saying, again, we're like, guys, we, we, we know behind the veil that the capacity is not there. And yet, it's not except just because we can do it cheaper. If it takes you forever, then you've lost the value of that cheapness because it's like, okay, my expectations are lost. And that's the thing that we're, we, you could be so economic, economical, where you, you lost the value to say, okay, yeah, if we can do it cheaper and do it reasonably within the same amount of time, and I'll give you a premium on time to go a little bit longer, but if it's doubling my time, it's like, well, you're not really reading me what I needed because we want it, we want to experience our tax dollars on a daily that we want to realize it today. And so how do you trade that off? I, 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 and again, now I'm glad, Mark, you came back on this conversation, which is about capacity. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I say we outsource the majority of it, and then you back me on that. And that was the spirit of buying that machine, Mike, when you guys brought this up, was, it, it was the backfield, it was to go and do strategic, not to become a full scale, we're going to be in a resurfacing business. I'm mm -hmm. not saying not resurface, but you know what I'm saying, that you out there, you got these big, large contracts, let, let these guys do what they do, because now you got more that you can leverage, so now we went from the SPOS and the LMIG, y'all do that, now it's a bigger contract, and then maybe now that'll get us more dedicated, now it puts us in a different threshold. I'm just... It's yeah, not this. I don't disagree. Uh, yeah, but if, let me let me offer this for for perspective. We we're uh, with uh, with about two and a half million dollars. We're doing twelve miles uh, contracted out. Twelve miles. Twelve 
Twelve and a half miles. Because it's, it's more costly. Because my back in the day, we used to get what seven miles per five, five, seven miles, right? Yeah. I mean, I did ten miles. But remember, Riverside was seven and a half of my was seven percent of my budget. So, and, well, and, and some of these roads are wider than the norm. But yeah. but the point being, to, to give you a sense of relativity, Three miles. we we have on our LME, we have twenty six miles that we do within house courses, and we're doing that for. A million and a half, uh -huh. not you. even one point four. So, for you know, for twice as much almost as what is we're doing at, at our uh, for half of what we're paying the contractor, mm -hmm. we're doing twice, nearly twice, twice as much over, over what period of time? Well, yeah, but but it is that kind of ratio. So I think like that. So and I, and I, I get I get your point about the trade off, but but. Um, you know, it, it, it's, we're not within striking distance in terms of the, the dollars. It's order of magnitude that we would, we would go from, you know, 30 miles to perhaps 10 miles if we bid it out. Mm -hmm. If we bid all of that. I see. You've got to find that equilibrium. Exactly. You know, looking for us, this is what we started with you last year. Come up with the org structure, tell us what the, the whole, we, we know. And, that, and that's, that, those are the discussions that we're having now because we realize that we cannot continue to have part of one year's workload spill into the next. I see. We never, and so, so we're looking at bidding out some of that so that we can catch up. And then well, we're, that's the problem we're facing in Camden County is the cycle time on the paving roads. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would be your best practices of paving at just a typical? County road, mm -hmm. not it, a major thoroughfare. What the, would you like to see? The life expectancy of a pavement, brand new pavement, is 15 years. Okay. All right. So within a 15 year time period, you have to monitor and see what it needs. You have to do periodic maintenance. Yeah. So for example, you may have to do a crack ceiling. Yeah. It would, after 15 years, you got to go in and give it an overlay okay. at minimum. So some of our roads in the county. 30. They have we still let it in all right. 25, 30? All right, so keep, keep, we can not believe this, guys, and I don't want to, but that's aside. Can you give us a list, uh, provide a, an updated list of our resurfaced roads per commission district like you always do, mm -hmm. like where we are right now, and what's, you, even though you resurface them, they should be at the bottom, you know, your ranking, based on your ranking. Can you provide that? I, I, we certainly can. Now, let me, let me offer this. One of the things that we discussed last year, and it is an item that we've requested for the budget, is to have a comprehensive county-wide evaluation of all the payments. Because really, everything that we have by way of payment uh, ranking or index is so outdated that it's just mm -hmm. that So it's really not, I mean, all right, so to your point, it could be more density um, on a certain road. It could have been further up the queue because it's been torn up versus just by eight. It's experiencing more truck traffic now. Yep. There's a lot of variables. How much was that? 300. All right. That, that's in the budget. That's the budget. The the budget, budget yeah, that's the budget. Right. Uh, to read, to do all of this. Mm -hmm. 300 grand. All right, keep going. Okay. Back to what we what Mark went away to get to see if it was the budget. Um, we're working on it. I have an answer, but I need uh, Jennifer to confirm it. My answer is no. It's not included in the budget. It wasn't included in the budget that was approved in December, in no order the revisit in March. Neither one of those. She's also checking the third party operator. All right, just in case. Here's the question. Budget. Here's the question. Maybe. What was the amount that was put back in at 500 that came out of this committee? Because the point 340 is, something thousand, which was the match for the items in that were grant funded. So that right? All right. We'll, we'll Jennifer's going to check. She's yeah. checking. We'll put all of that. All right. All right. So that being the case, do, do we want to uh, target uh, the recommendation? To be the capital fund? No, we're, let's get a confirmation from Jennifer first and then okay. we'll come back to it. Okay, very good. Because I do have other items that, that impact okay. that decision. I think we're talking two separate things. I'm talking about the money's 
part of the capital transportation fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You're talking about budget, though. Those are two separate things to me. If we're talking about a budget, the budget is the budget, but it didn't have anything to do with our conversation regarding the capital transportation fund, which was a separate fund. That was the whole point. What am I missing here? Well, we're saying, is it included in the 2018 budget, which that those funds would have come from the capital transportation fund, which I saw a note on there for, for some of that, or is there enough funds in the existing tr capital transportation fund? Correct? Yeah, let, let's take this one. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. I like that. All right. Okay. All right, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next item on the agenda, we've talked about uh, the party operator, sponsor, et cetera. Uh, Stuart Mill at Yancey, that, that's just a project right, update. Real, real quick, previous question, previous point. Yes. Right, is there a date you need to have already decided? What is the lap time to which to get these buses? I, I guess they need to be in place by the end of December or beginning. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, what's your time period? So are we rushed to make this decision? Or we, what? we really should be placing an order soon. Uh, I would, if we, if we defer this item to the next meeting a month from now, we may be, we may be delaying the delivery because we, we're thinking that it's going to take probably four months. Okay, we got to All right, so we'll find out real quick Mark, when we, we, we get out of the meeting. I have an answer right now if you want. Okay. It is not included in the FY18 budget. Is it in the capital transportation? It was, uh, it wasn't in the December, what was voted on by the board in December, or it, and it was not approved in the March revisit. It was on okay. either one of those. All right, let me, let me say it differently. It wasn't the buses, it's the dollar amount that I'm going at. What was the dollar amount? In other words, it was the buses were taken out. Correct. I went from um, five hundred down to three forty six and some change. Right. The buses, the literal term buses, was taken out. As a condition of my vote, I know I put that money back in, and I said not to exceed. I mean, it's roughly something like a not to exceed. That's why I knew what I was saying. Put it back in to to cover the grant. Correct. The grant. Yes, right. that number is in there. Okay. That was three hundred and forty something thousand. No, it, it, it checked the five hundred because it was, it was supposed to cover the excess of the buses. In other words, we just go leave the money in there, and if it doesn't, then we're good. Just leave it in there. But that was the whole premise, which is check check the recommendation, check what came out of this committee. We'll yeah, we'll have to do it all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right, let it go. I, can't do it. I think we're on the same page. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So, uh, Stuart Mill Yancey project is back on track. Yes. Um, I, I got a call home, I got a contractor that expected to be paid, so we just have to help you. You're fine. I got this. Keep going. Okay. We still got a call. Yeah, we're fine. And then, uh, uh, so, so that project is underway again. Part of the issue there was that, that the contract allocated more time than they needed, and so they danced around some of the issues and, and perhaps uh, made a bigger deal out of the impediment. But anyway, they're back on track and, and so the utilities are being moved and the project is back on the way. There's no reason or excuse for it not to progress. Okay. Right. Next project, uh, Whitestone Culvert, the design on that has been nearly completed. Uh, they're finalizing uh, some of the uh, cost estimating uh, components to the value engineering to some of it because the uh, before we package this to bid out the cost, uh, we're going to have a pretty pretty good uh, handle on what it is likely to be uh, bid at. Okay. And uh, at this time, it's looking like uh, more than what we had originally anticipated. Okay. So we're looking at uh, fine-tuning, perhaps doing some value engineering there. Okay. But that program, I mean, that, that project is also progressing over on it. A couple other items that have come up for, uh, well, one other item that has come up for discussion, and I do have some handouts. Uh, I'm not exactly sure 
uh, the extent of where, where this is going to be applicable. Most of it obviously will be in the city. But uh, as part of the State Route 92 widening project, uh, there, there are going to be some sound barriers. And this is what the contractor, uh, or GDOT, really has sent to us for consideration uh, uh, just to, to make sure that we're comfortable with it. Uh, but uh, I'm not really sure how much of this is in the county. I've been trying to get better definition from, from them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it being a state project in the city, we don't have day-to-day uh, -day, uh, handle on where they are and where all of these appurtenances will go. So uh, it is entirely possible that all of it is confined to the city, uh, but some of it may spill into county right away. And to the extent that it does, this is what it's going to look like. And so they're, they're just wanting some, some confirmation that we, we, we don't have a strong objection to. Um, speaking of sound barriers along the highway and in different areas, um, so Commissioner Boker, remember we've had this conversation in the past, it says that I get new construction as part of a standard, now thus thou shalt have sound barriers. But what mm -hmm. about those older communities that already you know, pre-existed, now the density has come and they've been exposed, they're out here with crickets and everything, and now all of a sudden, you got these big super highways and cut throughs and all these trucks and so forth and there there's no way to go back. It's cost prohibitive to go back. Yeah. You just can't. It's a one you, can't, you can't really do it. So only just it is a position going forward. Uh, specifically what are we talking about here? This is State Route ninety two widening project. This okay. is a sound barrier. Okay. That would be installed. Uh, most of it in the city. There could be some sections in the county. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, G dot uh, sent that so that we could have a look at it and make sure we didn't have okay. a, a str any strong objections to it. Uh, I would imagine that you know that there are other options uh, available, but this one looks this is a, this pretty is a, clean to me. Right? This is a brick panel, and it's uh, uh, what am I seeing? What is the thickness? It's probably here somewhere. Uh -huh. it's not, it's not, it's not, you look on this side. No, it's not there either. Uh, What's the height? Can you determine? No, not from this. I don't see the scale. So what? So what? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, but but the height of these things it, is probably going to be eight, ten feet. Mm -hmm. but the reason I asked that, I'm thinking about the big um, uh, I seventy five super breeze, but everything they just opened up. And I remember some of the walls collapsed and supposed to be sound barriers and separations and stuff. But I'm just, I think to your point, what's the depth? What's the height? What is this? I mean, I don't, can you, I mean, you're sending, a, we're sending something to give input on the, Yeah, but the input for this is really the cosmetic component. It's not the structural. We're not going to be approving it. It's just the visual. Yeah. Do we, are we okay with Yeah, I have, I have no problem with it at all. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> but, no, okay, keep moving. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I this is nice. Know. You're sharing this this out of this here yeah, because there's right. no action for us to take, right? Um, no. Other than that, if there was some strong objection, we would go back and say, "Hey, is there something better?" Yeah. Yeah. I know in Arizona, you know, they have the uh, lizards and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, no, no. So this is. But this one is fairly clean, and, and so yeah, I just don't get it. these things go. Again, I they sent it to it's me. Like, he's the messenger. No, no, no. This ain't. This is not reflection on you. Okay. Just so when it starts going up, you, yeah. you look at it and you go, oh, yeah, I've seen it. Right. Let me, let me, Mr. Chairman, let me take a tangent here. Yeah. Uh, because this brings up something that I, I brought up in a meeting where we're talking about the, the truck parking and, you know, yes. having a plastic fence and all this other stuff. And I made, I made the remark, I, I, I've talked to a couple of times with our planning and zoning uh, uh, director and yep. asked him to discuss with their planning and zoning board. Now, again, I'm saying I'm going off a tangent from, from yeah. transportation. But we need substantial concrete uh, walls in, in uh, you know, future development. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't continue to go all of this, you know, Home Depot, six-foot panels, you know, dog ear, cedar wood, you know, that just caves in after, after uh, you know, four or five years, mm -hmm. but it's put up to satisfy adjoining neighbors next to a, uh, you know, a service station or a crystal restaurant or whatever. 
we need a, in our code in Mark Tech record, we need to look at our code and put in, put in some sort of a more substantial uh, wall type uh, structure. It's not plastic, it's not wood. And so I'm thinking, and you see these all the time, I, I mentioned Arizona, you see these all the time around subdivision compounds that are you know, adjacent to a, a county road or whatever. They have, they have concrete walls and they're installed in panels. So it's not like they're doing brickwork and mm -hmm. you know concrete blocks and you know build from scratch. Right. Uh, they put in the standards and then they slide in these panels and there's basically no you don't really have to worry about it too much if you unless you want to spray graffiti on. Them. But uh, I'm being facetious. Uh, but we need we need to do something better than these, these uh, plastic uh, panels and these uh, cedar you know wood panels that nobody takes care of. We put them in there and make, make, our, make the mission feel good. We, allow, we don't allow wood. Yeah, maybe not anymore, but the plastic doesn't last. Yes. You get one tree limb on it, and, you know. Yeah, that's what we need. Okay, so let's, let's return to the agenda. Thank you for... No, uh, no, can we make a note, though, just to that point? I mean, you got to capture your thoughts. I mean, you're, you're not just talking. Hopefully, you're leaving us stuff that we can use in the future. So yeah, please. thank you. I yield now. Yeah, we go. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, the... the uh, other item that uh, relates really more to the capital transportation fund yep. is budgeting for projects that are approaching the yep. uh, getting to construction. And we have two of those that are coming up in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. And we have a fairly substantial shortfall in, in the funding. And uh, mm -hmm. As best as I've been able to, to decipher, uh, and, and the cost estimates I've asked uh, to, for those to be updated, and so these are the latest numbers uh, in terms of the estimate. It looks like on the Maxim Road project and the State uh, Route 5 uh, dual left turn project, uh, we have a, a uh, overall total of about $1.5 million in shortfall. That would be taken into account the fact that both of these projects, uh, in fact, one of them is uh, certified. Uh, the expectation is that we will get notification that has been certified for construction uh, probably uh, early October, and the other one is going to be in November. Both of them are going to be bid out towards the end of the year for construction in the spring if everything else is in place. And one of the items that stands between us and uh, the eventual construction, successful construction, would be the, the funding allocation. Some of the original items, that, that uh, original estimates, uh, understandably the, the costs have gone yeah. up. Yeah. Others were not as, uh, as on target as they could have been. But uh, nonetheless, uh, particularly on the Maxim Road project. We're slightly over a million dollars when we take uh, in, uh, uh, in deficit when we take into account the fact that there is going to need to be some construction inspection as well as testing. And in terms of, of uh, these estimates for the construction and, and the testing, uh, they're figured at about 6% for the inspection, 2% for the, for the testing of the construction map. So those are within the range for this size project. And uh, as it relates to the construction inspection, we have the option, and we've talked about this last year, and we're going to have be having some additional discussion as part of the budget process, that uh, between these two projects, we're looking at uh, 160 Probably a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in inspections. Now that can be done by an outside consultant. Uh, we've had instances where uh, Moreland has uh, offered uh, to do this, and they provided us some estimates for what it would take to do. Uh, but it is in this order of magnitude. So we're looking at about. 
for these two projects, both of which are anticipated will break in 2019, uh, of about $180,000 for inspections and another 60,000 uh, you know, 60, for testing. Uh, we can we can lump all that together and give it to a consultant, or we can split it up and have a testing outfit do the testing, independent of, of the consultant. Or what we have suggested both last year and what we're suggesting again this year as part of the budget process is that we actually hire an in-house uh, coordinator engineer uh, that would handle this. Uh, we believe that. Uh, with one additional position, we'll be able to do the inspections in-house. Of course, the testing, we would have to get a testing, a, a GDOT certified testing outfit to do. Okay, all right, but let me, let me, let me answer. All right. All right. I, I think I get it. I, I, I guess I'm going to ask the question. We, we've had this conversation before about do we do it in-house, do we do a consultant? And I was on the impression that we had, we do, do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it's, so I thought we were all we had already overcome this. We had this conversation with the SPLOS. We went and found consultants to be able to perform the function. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, we even put it um, before the Board of Commissioners. Now, I'm trying to get a feel for well, what's different now. Should this not already be in place? Uh, this was something that we had ample conversation about. Um, we would have this tester. We would have this inspector. Um, it's sort of the comment the guy made yesterday regarding the, the, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, the street lights. Like he says, well, that's not my job. That wasn't in our contract. Y'all supposed to do that. And that's why I sat there stunned like, uh-huh. So I, I guess I, I, we, we got to be a little bit more consistent. Um, we, we, when, we, when I hear stuff, it's like, this is not new. And, and so we're, what happened to that? We, that did, we did discuss it, but it didn't prove it. It, we, no, we didn't approve it. Why don't we approve it? was on the agenda. We because we said we would do it in house. No. We didn't need it. Even this construction inspector, the question came up, well, can we use FLOS funds to pay for this position? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Miguel and I both said yes. So then we had to go to Ken and get answers on that. But no, it never came back to this committee for a recommendation. Mm -hmm. We need to fulfill the function. So why do we keep going? And we got other consultants within the Moreland contract. Well, but we because, because we haven't had a project of this type that is tied to federal funding. Oh, okay. I, 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 so, so we've been handling the inspection in-house for our county projects. Now, with the addition of these, they have specific requirements. We would need to augment that or bring it in-house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not saying about spots, but we had the whole Ronnie Wood conversation. This is pre you. Ronnie Wood, Ronnie Wood, 100 grand. We use spots dollars for bringing consultants to do certain bodies of work. This was nothing new. I'm okay with the narrative. This is what we want to come up with a justification rationale not to use external consultants or that, well, we can do this again ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I keep hearing this consistency, we can do it ourselves. And it's like, guys, it's not about you, you not, don't have the competence. It's just, it's about capacity and about getting stuff done that we're not exposed to, that we're pausing. It's like, it's to premium the cost of doing business on behalf of the people. So I'm not arguing the point about that if y'all are not bright enough to pull it off. It's capacity. And it's to hold other people accountable because the last thing you needed, the Board of Commissioners like, okay, what happened? I thought you had this. So I, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm, I'm trying to make it easy. Says, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to support what we need to do what we need to do. I mean, do the inspection. Do the testing. That's what we said. We, 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 we need, we need, in my opinion, we need, we need to hire somebody that's competent. It's not, to me, if you want to say capacity in terms of, of competency. Yeah. Yeah, competency. We presently don't have the expectation and competence and, and depth of, of depth. knowledge that it, that it take, takes to, to, to do this job to a federal Specification, right? And yes, we discussed it, and it was more or less deferred until there was some discussion, legal discussion, whether we could pay for it with spots or whatever. Uh, but from day one, I supported hiring uh, uh, in-house competency uh, to do this type of work. 
it's going to be a lot cheaper in short term and longer term to have that person on staff that's capable of actually doing some, doing some other things, having that person on staff rather than paying more than house or, or or somebody else to come in and do it for the time being for the next you know six months or a year or whatever, two years. And then, and all then these construct these road projects we've got coming up in Splash that haven't started yet, they're either in design or they're mm -hmm. a little bit before that. We can use them there. We're going to need this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. We're, we're going to need it. No, my, my, and we won't believe it. My, my friends, you're, you're seven people short in one area. We still don't have a number two. We, we Again, this is your one year later. I'm looking at transportation, which we've always supported. We've always got that. We put 51% behind this uh, of the spot. There's no question we support. So there's not a question about, it's like, can you handle this capacity, this expectation? And I hear we're given this, we're given the, yes, I can, yes, I can. I'm like, listen to, we're, we're conflicting on what we're saying. And it's like, well, when are y'all gonna get ahead of the curve? When are you gonna hire? You've got to support. It's not like we're, this is like we're all in on this. We, as a matter of fact, I think this is one area in which we had universal, absolute, unanimous support, but yet, all, through two administrations, but yet, I'm like, I'm, we're still, we still have holes in the organization. And we keep, it's almost like we're going around and around, like, come on, guys, we with you. But you've got to pull the trigger. And I mean, do you have the capacity even to even go hire an interview? Because you're so busy, you're so thin. Because you got to do all this, and I get it. I'm not, I'm not. I'm saying, we're with you. What is it going to take for us to get to that place where it's like, okay, guys, I'm, I'm not fighting one way or another. I'm, I'm leaning on your expertise, but all I'm looking at is like, but didn't we just haven't we been here? We went to the threshold, and we didn't pull the trigger when this when this man right here yeah. said he, he needed this position. So. Uh, we we need we need to commit we need to commit in terms of recommendation going into that budget. I you know I you know we had the we had the initial budget that was voted in December and then we had the supplemental budget and I, I think at some point I, that was one of the positions that I recommended that that be included in, in the supplemental. I could be misremembering because I, I had a couple of comments on that, but we, we need to move we need to move forward on this on this position for the transportation department. And I'll, I'll, I get it. Again, I'm trusting you guys as expertise. Again, no problem. I just, to your point, let's pull the trigger because we, we keep getting behind it. We're getting behind it. And, and to, to Mark, to your point, the work is going to keep doning. We're really going to hit this, this year three and year four. Mm -hmm. It's going to really hit us. And that's what I'm saying. What takes it takes a time to even hire somebody mm -hmm. internally, where at least I can pick up the phone and say, Get me somebody here tomorrow. Yes, I know it's going to be a premium, but I want to hit the expectations that we're doing our. Uh, I'm done. Right. So what uh, is that? What, what is the action item? And, and I and I appreciate your support. And and uh, you know, since I got here a year ago, I have very much uh, been uh, supported by this committee and by the board as a whole. So there's that's not a question. That's a non-issue for me. The the the. We're looking ahead as we look at the timeline for delivery of these projects. We talked about spring of 2019, yeah. when they will break. So I'm backing from there about seven, eight months to get this process to where when these things break and we start construction, yep. we would be poised with what we need. And we can go again, one, the consulting side, there's nothing wrong with that. It just costs a lot more. Or, but does it get you what you need right now? In other words, you're bringing an expert because again, we don't have anything to prove here. I just want to prove that we, we can get it done, right? So I get that the rationale may be long term, hire the person, grow it organically in house, have the the, the capacity in house. But in the meantime, yeah. versus just keep having this conversation, well, we're going to hire it and we keep stalling and we keep rationalizing it's like. Come on, you know what I'm saying? But you got the support. So the other thing, Commissioner Mulcair, is that priorities do shift. It's like at some point, like, okay, you need to, when you got opportunity, you need to grab it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, it goes without saying is that, you know, some of the other ones, they, they tend to know, like, look, when you have support, grab it. Um, all right, I'm gonna let it go. So what's the action item? Recommendation to hire this position included in, in the BIR. In this cycle? Yes. Construction inspector? And this would be a project engineer. What do you think the cost are going to be in the marketplace to fill this position? Um, 
I get you that number. Uh, I, so let's just go to prove this and let, let the number come out with the full board of commissioners. Let's not right. slow this down with us. Yes. Huh? I make I make a motion to approve the construction inspection for the DOT department. Project engineer. Project, excuse me. Project engineer with, with the salary to be determined and attached to the recommendation. With, with this clue says they can do both federal and local and state projects? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Discussion. Uh, in discussion? Just <laughs> <laughs> and Go ahead. Splice funds can be used on splice projects to pay that portion of this person's salary. That's fine. Yes. yes. It can be. That's from Ken. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, you're, you're appropriate. You got any more discussion? Um, let me see. The only, the last item, and we, we yeah. have a, No, no. I'm sorry. Any more discussion on this oh, topic? This right. No. All in good. favor say aye. Any aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Let me discuss it. Yeah, was getting sort of long. So well, let's no, 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 I, just, uh, I want to make sure I cover all the items. Okay. Yeah. We already started to talk about the Lee Road maintenance yes. uh, component. To, and we, uh, again, I, and I think I responded to, to your inquiry about uh, we've been out there. Uh, in fact, I was out there myself uh, at one point looking for the complaint area. Right. And, and so there's so many uh, different locations there where things could be that we right. go out and we address one area and we get a call. Uh, well, you didn't do, you haven't taken care of it, but we, we did. We took care of 10 potholes. Right. Well, it wasn't the one that I called about. Of course, that that made my call. Specific uh, it was, uh, yeah. where it was. But in any event, so, so we're attending to that. However, this is a short-term fix. And We've had discussions over the last several months, perhaps even longer than that, about when do we uh, pull the trigger and decide that we're going to do something more robust, more substantive. Now, we don't need to make a decision right now, but this is where in our investigation where we are. In terms of the project, we're still hopeful to be line up everything and. Uh, have all the planets and stars line up to be able to move that forward. So that is to the goal. In the meantime, anything that we do where we are changing the configuration, the elevation of the road, anything that we put on top, is, would require us to go back and tweak the plans, which is it costs money plus it, it's not the best way to go. So if we are going to consider something more comprehensive, such as an overlay, we, the recommendation is that we go in with, a, with an inch and a half of mill and an inch and a half inlay and put it back at the existing elevation so that we uh, actually strengthen, get some structural integrity uh, to the road. We keep it at the same elevation so that we do not have to change the plants and uh, we hopefully will not have as many complaints regarding maintenance, potholes, etc. for however long it takes us to move forward with the long-term project. Now, to do that, it's going to cost about half a million bucks. Right. That is, so yes. You gave me a number of 350 plus another 150 with this extra line, extra milling. So, mm -hmm. so 350. So this is basically to resurface the road. Resurface. I'm Mill and separate. resurface. Yeah. The, the entire road or just the entire road. really bad portion? Mm -hmm. The entire road. Hold on. From the bridge to Punks. Correct. To Fair Road. Two and a half miles. Correct. Okay. And we're talking about doing this in this year's upcoming budget process. If I only get three miles, Mike, it mm -hmm. takes. Oh, because I got too many ideas. I mean, that's the, I'm getting killed on that. And it's just, we, we, again, we won't get into the expansion why the project, it doesn't really matter. But it's one of those where we recognize, and I've talked to Madam Chair, that there's a trade off that we gotta, there's gonna be some throwaway on the edges when, when this ultimate uh, Lee Road expansion and winding does occur. But in the meantime, I can't wait another six, seven years while we work through this and get what, some big, seven, eight digit, you know, match against this, which is not there yet. So it's easier for me to take the hit on half million a day in my normal operational budget than to 
wait around until we make the prioritization decision to find ten million dollars. Yeah. I mean, I can I concur. I, I, I've driven the road and, and uh, it's too much traffic. Yeah. I wouldn't. I know. I tell you, another problem especially is the Mount Mount Vernon Road too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, no, do we know that? Mm -hmm. So. I'm seeing Maxim Road and I'm seeing um, SR5, and then we segued it to sort of this whole lead road. Uh, I know this conversation was about the engineer, which I think we solved that right. So we, but I want the previous question before I make a decision on this latter one. These two numbers here, where are these numbers? Where's the source of funds? Well, that, that would be the capital transportation fund uh, to the extent that there are unallocated funds within it. So we, we don't have a million five sitting in our capital chain. We once did. See, my don't you? Like, we're here two and a half, three and a half. Uh -huh. Four million, man. I mean, it's for yeah, moment. One L made. Yeah. yeah one L made. Yeah, 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 the mistake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we should have just stopped it where the scope was. It's okay. Uh, that's just our inside. So, what we can do right now in this meeting, other than you're making a note, because what are we going to pull it from? We don't have it. We have less than what, four hundred thousand in it for something else. Right, so we Michelle's can... working with Miguel to get these numbers in another column on the CTF spreadsheet yeah. so that we see everything on one page. Right. So yeah. Talk about so we're finance. Finance. Yes, yes. We talk about the finance. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're good. Yeah, we we talk about you often. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good way. Um, yes. <laughs> so so this is not a so we can't take any action on this, right? No, no, this is, this is for information that as you are deliberating over the various legal agreements and local areas. But we keep mm -hmm. this in mind because, uh, again, these numbers are in flux and, and uh, Michelle and I, well, finance and, and uh, DOT, we've been communicating back and forth over a long period of time. And incidentally, the, uh, the uh, person that's going to be tracking all of the funding and is going to be sure yeah, that we provide starts on Monday. Start oh, Monday. Starts Monday. Internal or external to hire? Internal. Oh, the external? External. You brought somebody. That's fine. Where you bring one? Um, she worked uh, She works right now for a uh, non-profit. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. You were, I, I thought you meant by external as in a uh, consultant, uh, a consultant. Yeah. That's what okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But uh, but uh, she had been working for uh, various municipalities, counties, okay. doing a lot of the work that we would need done here. Okay. Tracking budgets, uh, dealing with capital projects, dealing with grants. Right. I see. So, so she's as, as specialized in sort of that. Very much so. Right. Right. Let's clarify right. for me. Now I'm confused. Is it external or internal? Is she the Are we hire? Yes. She yeah, has, she, uh, she is. So we hire her externally. She wasn't an internal transfer. Well, hell, hell, I figured that out. <laughs> I, I did too. I'm distressing this from something. No, we're good. Okay. Um, what else you got? We got That's it. Can we go back? Yes. To funding for acquisition of additional buses. Yes. Please. So I think we're on the same page now. So Jennifer did some more digging because I explained to her about the 500. So there was a total of 1 million that was transferred from the CTF to the general fund during the budget process. 500 was to help balance the general fund budget. The other 500 included the 346 for the grants that were included in the budget. And then the buses were not included. There's an additional 154,000, which was part of that 500. That's not tied to anything. Correct. That thank you. Looking for. I knew exactly what I was doing. Sir, right there, 11. Yeah. All right, 11.6. Yeah, 1106. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So yes, it is. The money's in the the money's in the budget for the match. The actual the project is not. Yeah, so we would have to add that, that's and that's that's uh we that's money in money out. Yeah, but but we would yeah. have to amend the multimodal budget budget. Yes, yeah, I'll work that out. out. Yes, we yeah. work that out. So do we need a recommendation? We would because to it, make that to make that recommendation to go to to amend uh, the multimodal uh, 
budget or section 165 budget to include the funding the match for the additional buses well it just needs to be the funding for the additional but no the, the match is in there the match is in the budget but we have to in, include the funding which one they'll the, do they'll throw the grant overall. funding in there and then they'll throw uh okay yes so it'll, it'll be a wash gotcha. so commission over all we're saying is that we're making a recommendation out of this committee to take the match mm -hmm. or the buses mm -hmm. uh, with the source being the general fund and, and yes. moving that money over to wherever it needs to go mm -hmm. to fulfill this transaction mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and we'll work out the details on the agenda okay i'm not sure the agenda item is correct commissioner Mocha, are we in agreement yes Taking yeah. it from the general fund that we've allocated this amount for the buses only right that's all you're asking for right the match against the buses. The buses and the, the wrapping of the buses. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so the total amount uh, will inclusively uh, 558000 mm -hmm. And then the match was one. The, ma the match is 111 yes. so, we, so we have it in the budget. The match is included. Yeah. Uh, I made it. Uh, I need a motion to uh, move, to, to make the match as well as the total amount for the buses to be moved from general fund over into multimodal department total amount of 548 and the match of 111.6 the budget will have to be amended for the 548 558 yeah 558 it's a long day 558 and 112. I'm going to round this up. Y'all work it out. Can I have a motion? Mark. What about a motion to purchase? Eight. It, uh, purchase. Six, and eight, six additional buses, is that what it is? Eight, eight, eight buses. Eight, eight, so eight, eight additional buses, at eight additional cutaways. At the total cost. Um, with a match of 111,000, what? 600. 600, and amend the budget. Yeah. That'll take care of the, Second. the funding. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 You know, anybody decline to say? Mr. Chairman, that's all the items that I have. That was tough, but we're good. You good? We're good? Yes, sir. All right, there's nothing else. Need. Are we sure we're clear on everything else? So we, um, all right, meeting minutes, we're going to have to make sure these are tight on this one. Uh, uh, if there's nothing else need to come before this committee, it is adjourned.